Twilight spun helplessly through the air. She didn't have enough strength left in her wings to lever herself out, as the rapid descent from the clouds had drained what little she had. Thanks to Twilight's recklessness, she had made the situation two times worse than it already was. How could she have been so foolish? The protege of the princess, Celestia's most prized and trusted student, had made an error so great it would cost Twilight, and possibly everyone around her, their lives. She knew she wasn't capable of stopping her fall. Her wings were far too tired and numb, not to mention she knew of no spell that could stop a fall this large. Not only that, but she couldn't focus herself in time anyway. As she spiraled, she caught a glimpse of Celestia, who had already recovered, but failed to notice Twilight as she tumbled towards the earth. She didn't see Discord, but she was sure that he had already warped to the ground by now. Twilight had been falling what seemed for like an eternity, but the howling roar of the air around her was a cool reminder of how little time she had left to live. She squinted her eyes as she screamed for her life. She could hardly make any sense of the world as she spiraled through the air, but she could see the ground as she quickly drew closer to its inescapable grasp. She put her hooves over her head, expecting the hard, bloody impact that was soon to come. But when it failed to occur, she was left wondering. Instead, she saw the sky as she gently floated to the ground. She felt like she was being carried, but she was in such a panic, stupor, that it was hard to be sure. Twilight stared, dumbfounded, at the eclipse before her, noticing that the moon had grown to double its normal size. She wasn't sure what that meant at the time, nor was she sure that it was some sort of hallucination brought upon by the litters of adrenaline that had been pumping through her veins. Perhaps this was what it felt like to transcend and die and go to heaven. After all, she had been a good pony throughout her life. She slowly closed her eyes and relaxed her body. When she felt her back being dropped slightly against the ground, Twilight abruptly opened her eyes only to see a grief-stricken and panting teal pegasus above her. Rainbow Dash! Twilight exclaimed loudly before jumping to her feet, only to topple over a few seconds later. Her head was spinning with dizziness as she tried to force herself to stay still. Dash used her two front hooves to study the alicorn in front of her. What the hell happened up there? Asked Dash, who was obviously terrified. Were you in that blast? Twilight looked at Dash her eyes slowly coming to a stop before she nodded her head and began to speak. I screwed up, Dash, she stated, her ears flattening to her head, really gladly. Dash's expression grew grim. What did you do? She asked flatly, fear draining all the emotion out of her speech. Twilight! Rainbow Dash! exclaimed a happy, pudding-covered dragon as he ran towards the pair. Oh, am I happy to see you two! Spike, said Twilight, recognizing his voice immediately. She turned her head away from Dash, and sharply to the chocolate-covered dragon. Oh, my sweet Celestia, Spike! She began to gallop over toward the sprinting chocolate blob, before tackling him into a big, pudding-covered hug. I saw you die! I saw Nightmare Moon push you over, and I saw you fall! Why are you covered in pudding? How did you find me? How did you survive? And again... Why are you covered in pudding? Dash only stared in confusion at the baffled sight before her. Apparently, Twilight thought Spike was dead, but he wasn't. And now he's covered in pudding, for some reason. Me, announced Spike. I thought you died. I saw the rubble, and thought you were buried somewhere beneath it. Spike broke the hug and stared up into Twilight's eyes. I came here with Discord and Fluttershy to help with the battle. Spike looked down, his eyes guilty, though you told me not to. Dash's ears perked up, breaking her train of thought. Fluttershy? She called to Spike, before jumping over to the chocolate-covered pair. Where is she? Dash inquired, a serious tone behind her words. Spike looked up at Dash, surprised by the question. Uh, last time I saw her, she was at the foot of the mountain. I'm not sure what- Dash had already taken off, eager to clear her conscience before it was too late. What's her deal? Asked a bewildered purple dragon as she looked up toward Twilight. 
I'm not sure, said the baffled Alicorn beside him. Doesn't matter. We have to go, Spike. What? We, we have to get out of here. Why? said Spike, obviously opposed to the idea. We have to at least try and help Discord and Celestia. We can't, Spike. I may be an accomplished magician, maybe even more, but I couldn't wave my horn at the caliber of magic they're pulling off. Spike couldn't believe what he was hearing. So, you plan to run away? Twilight Sparkle, the esteemed mind and apprentice to friendship, is abandoning those who need her the most? Suddenly, Twilight's eyes narrowed as she became infuriated with Spike. Because of me, Night Moon's unstoppable. I accidentally gave her Mind Smear Mixture, which makes you think incredibly clear before it... Twilight's face suddenly came to a realization. Knocks you out. Twilight's entire demeanor had changed. Spike, that's it. She only has about ten minutes before she'll be face first in the dirt. All we have to do is keep her at bay until she cucks out. Spike opened his mouth to begin to talk, but the voice they heard didn't come from him. Only ten minutes, said the ominous pony behind them. Twilight knew who was speaking, and couldn't believe her ears. She slowly turned around, only to have her worst fears confirmed. There, standing behind her, was Nightmare Moon. Twilight's heart sank. What? She managed to utter out in a slow whisper. Nightmare Moon let out a slow chuckle. No need to cower, Twilight Sparkle. I have only come to thank you. She cast a nasty glance at Spike. However, your dragon might not survive my gratitude. Spike clenched his fists and glared at Nightmare Moon, who only cast her glaze back to Twilight. You lent a helping hoof during my time of need, so I felt it only appropriate to reciprocate. Twilight stared at her, eyes filled with a pantheon of emotions, raging from sorrow to regret. But first, you see, I must expedite a few plans of mine on behalf of my imminent incapacitation. Take a look at the moon, Twilight Sparkle. The purple alicorn grimly turned her head to the sky before opening her eyes and taking a sharp breath. The moon was huge, almost three times as big as it was normally. How could Twilight not have noticed? She had been staring down on the battle for so long, it never occurred to her to look up. As we speak, that beautiful, milky white pearl is hurtling through space at speeds that would boggle your mind. I wanted to truly appreciate the sight of the moon crashing into our earth so I made the cursed boulder drop fast enough to reach the earth about three hours after starting its descent. Now that I have found out about my unfortunate ultimatum, I'm going to have to rush things a bit. Twilight turned to Nightmare in horror, who only smiled with a calm evil air about her as she lit her horn black. Twilight stood up and began to use her magic, she couldn't sit idle while Nightmare Moon talked of destroying the world, no matter how outgunned she may be. Twilight sent a bright purple magic missile hurling from her horn, but it dissipated upon hitting the mare's black skin without leaving so much as a mark. Twilight desperately continued to fire her magic projectiles, only for each violent bolt to have the same useless effect. Nightmare Moon only smiled as her horn glowed, a photon absorbing black. The world around her seemed to distort with the indescribable amount of power that was being focused through one being. Twilight's vision wrapped and wobbled before there was a deafeningly loud blast, sending a pitch-dark beam of energy towards the moon. Twilight looked on in horror as the already falling chunk of rock lurched towards the earth, its figure growing ever larger and shaking violently as if it were vibrating. The white surface began to darken and smear. The celestial object reacted with Nightmare Moon's magic. The moon will hit the earth in just five minutes, giving me enough time to take care of a few final business matters before watching that glorified rock decimate this one. The evil black mare turned towards twilight. 
Now, everyone on this planet will die, except for two lucky ponies. Nightmare Moon wrapped her wing around Twilight's shoulder and pulled the stupefied Alcorn to her side. And my gift to you for making all of this possible. Nightmare's horn sparked black. Is your life. Suddenly, Twilight was encased in a transparent, magical bubble. She began to bang her hooves on the side of the container, but to no avail. This pod will protect you from the impact of the moon, before I succumb to the adverse effects of the potion. I, too, will encase myself in a pod like this. Once the planet has been destroyed by the lunar monstrosity that was my prison for a thousand years, I will reshape the broken pieces into a world more suitable for my tastes. And you will be the primary catalyst in all of it. Twilight tried to use her magic to break the bubble, but the inside neutralized her horn, sending a jolting burst of electricity down through her skull, causing her to collapse against the inside of her imprisoning orb. Nightmare Moon watched with a smile before turning to the small purple figure who watched helplessly as Twilight struggled inside of her spherical prison cell. As for you, little dragon. Spike said nothing. He only stared at the moon with a sad expression. I cannot say that I don't admire your bravery. You are quite the remarkable little dragon for one so young. And though it is a shame that I must kill you so early on in your life, know that you will always be my favorite martyr. There was a black flash, and an intensifying beam of energy pierced the baby dragon's chest, ripping part of his scales and tearing through his flesh. He stumbled around for a few seconds, desperately trying to keep hold of his life, before he toppled to his side, his large green eyes completely still and lifeless. Nightmare Moon could hear Twilight's frantic cries as she witnessed her life companion die in front of her, while she could do nothing but watch helplessly. Normally, death made Nightmare Moon lustful and bloodthirsty, but the sheer misery that eman emanated from Twilight made her feel like she hadn't felt in a long time. Satisfaction. As Nightmare Moon watched each one of her plans succeed without interruption, she could only smile. This was her destiny. This was her purpose. She was destruction. She was death. When suddenly, the little purple dragon began to crawl towards twilight. Nightmare looked on as the dying dragon spent his last bit of energy, dragging himself along the dirt, before stopping to write something. Pink blood began to pool where he lay, as he shakily began to etch a few letters into the ground. He only managed to write T-H-A-N-K-Y, before he slumped over and lay completely still. Twilight hung her head low in the bubble, sobbing profusely as she read Spike's final words. Nightmare simply began to laugh callously as the terrible sight before her took place. However, Twilight was too far down in her own despair to pay her any mind. Nightmare Moon then turned around and took off. She wanted to find Celestia. She had a few words she wanted to share with a princess before she destroyed the very land that she claimed to rule.